Did John Mozeliak hit a home run at the trade deadline with the deal that he made with the Texas Rangers? We discuss that and more on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube if you want that, that visual version of the show. If you want to see me wearing ugly shirts like I have on today because the Cardinals won on Tuesday night. So uh, you can check that out. Uh, Hit the notification button, like, subscribe when you find us on YouTube. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. So the Cardinals did pick up that W against the uh, NL Central Division champion Milwaukee Brewers last night behind a great outing by Miles Michaelis, who fired off seven innings of one-run baseball. And I've been Pretty hard on Miles Michaelis, uh, especially recently, since middle of August, really, when he's really been struggling. But you got to give the guy credit. He looked good on Tuesday. And you get the key hit from Richie Palacios, who has come out of nowhere and is becoming everybody's favorite player. You get the sack fly by Mason Wynn. He continues to do smart things and productive things on the diamond. And the home run by Edmund. So a uh, solid victory for the boys. And until the Cubbies, you know, choked away their game <laughs> against the Atlanta Braves, the win had uh, put a brief pause on the Brewers' celebration on winning the NL Central. But we've got other news that was uh, kind of a big deal yesterday involving Cardinals prospect Thomas Sejaci. And if you haven't heard, he was just named the Texas League MVP for the season. So congratulations to Thomas. He is the fifth player in Springfield Cardinals team history to win this award. Moises Gomez won it last year. Dylan Carlson won it in 2019. The late Oscar Tavares won it in 2012, and then Matt Adams the year before that in 2011. Uh, went through some of the lists because I, you know, I don't know who's won these MVP awards before at Double A uh, Baseball. So I kind of went through some of the names here and uh, came across some some familiar ones. Former Cardinal Ray Langford won the award when uh, the Cardinals had Arkansas as their affiliate back in 1989. As did someone by the name of Tyrone Horn in 1998. I have never heard of this guy. Never heard of this guy. Tyrone Horn at Arkansas, 1998. He hits 312, 37 home runs, and 139 RBIs. Holy crap. Again, never heard of this guy in my life. Looking at his bio, never made it to the pros. He was 5'10", 185, hit 37 home runs and 139 RBIs. 1998 steroids, maybe not accusing you, just asking steroids, maybe. Um, it was 1998 after all, something else kind of big happened in that 1998 year that had something to do with uh, the roids, but we won't get into that. Uh, Hector Cruz with Arkansas 1973, uh, Jim Bochamp in 1963, Nick Cullup in 1939, Dizzy Dean 1931. Uh, another former Cardinal, Greg Jeffries, won it while he was with the Mets organization in 1987. Some other notables who have won it over the years, not a part of the Cardinals organization at any point. Uh, future Hall of Famer Hank Greenberg, Joe Morgan. Uh, we got Matt Chapman and George Springer now with the Blue Jays, but won it while they were with the A's and the Astros AA teams. Mike Moustakis and Johnny Damon when they were under the uh, Royals umbrella. Steve Sachs with the Dodgers. Daryl Strawberry with the Mets. So some decent company to be linked with for Mr. Thomas Sejaci. And uh, the write-up for Springfield said this about the award that uh, Sejaci authored, one of the best offensive seasons of any player in minor league baseball. He ended up uh, leading all of minor league baseball with 170 hits and 294 total bases while ranking tied for second with 111 RBIs, tied for fifth with 60 extra base hits. The Carlsbad, California native became just the third Springfield Cardinal in team history to win the Texas League batting title with a 318 average, 
while also leading the league in double-A in RBIs. So J.C. was second in the league and fourth in double-A with 25 home runs, narrowly miss, missing winning the league and level Triple Crown Award. All told, so J.C. ranked among double-A leaders in 10 total categories and Texas League leaders in 12 total categories, separating himself as the top all-around offensive force in both. He hit 313 with 15 home runs and 78 RBIs in 93 games before the trade and then elevated his production even higher after joining Springfield on August the 1st with a 331 average, 10 home runs, 29 ribbies, and just 33 games as a Cardinal. He was named the St. Louis Cardinals Minor League Player of the Month for August before getting promoted to AAA Memphis on September the 8th to finish the campaign, currently ranked as the number nine prospect in the Cardinal system by MLB.com. Now, when CJC was traded over, I was looking at the Texas Rangers um, message boards. Okay. So when you, when you, this is something that I do. So when guys switch teams, I like to see what the other team's fans reactions are to either what they gave up or what they're getting. And obviously trade deadline, they were excited to get Jordan Montgomery and Chris Stratton. Um, you know, I did the same thing for Baltimore when it came to the uh, uh, Jack Flaherty trade. And most people were, upset about Cesar Prieto going, not so much about Drew Rahm, but they all like Prieto. And I noticed on this one with the Texas Rangers uh, message boards, not so many people were as bothered about losing to Koa Roby. He was hurt at the time, so I can understand that. But it was to JC that fans were, were kind of bummed about losing. And we found out why. We found out pretty quick. The dude can straight up rake. And he, he has done this his entire career. Back in his junior year in high school, which was 2019, he's a young guy. At 422 with 10 dingers over 102 at bats, then batted 440 with three home runs over seven games in 2020 before the pandemic canceled everything. Got selected by the Rangers in the fifth round, decided instead of going to Pepperdine, which is a very good school when it comes to baseball, decided that he's going to sign instead, go pro. A ball, 2021, 256, 10 home runs, 37 RBIs in 73 games. Next season between A and double A, it's a combined 312. 15 home runs, 70 RBIs in 103 games. And then you had this year where with the combination of double A and triple A stats, he hit 306 with 26 home runs, 111 RBIs in 139 games. And he's still only 21 years old. 21. Doesn't turn 22 until April. This is a young man. It's not like they got this guy out of college and he's like 24, 25 already. He's Mason Wynn's age. He's Jordan Walker's age. So that's another young guy that you're kind of excited about. You combine that with what you got from John King in the bullpen and what we've seen thus far from Takoa Roby, people seem excited about him, like what he offers. He'll continue his season in the Arizona Fall League. And do we dare say, I know, we don't like saying nice things about John Mosellock, but do we dare say that John Mosellock did a good job here? Do we? Can we say that out loud without, without people yelling at us or throwing things at us. Of course, we don't know who's going to be the winner of this trade quite yet because we don't even know if JC or Roby will even pan out at the major league level. We have no idea. We don't know if Montgomery and Stratton will lead the Rangers to glory in the postseason this year and win their first World Series in franchise history. They've done a really good job for the, for the Rangers so far. I'm sure they're pleased with what they've gotten out of them both. But remember, these guys are also rental players. So we don't even know if they're going to be back with the Rangers next season. So if they don't win a championship, is it worth it? Is it worth it? We'll find out in due time. But you got to be optimistic, considering the numbers for both Roby and CJC since the trade. And I brought it up before that one of the great things about CJC, and it's something that we love here in Cardinal Land is versatility. The guy can play multiple infield positions, which is, which is great. So he's not pigeonholed as just a third baseman or just a second baseman. He's already got time at third, short, second, and by all accounts has done a pretty good job at all of them. Does the fact that he is on the fast track to the major leagues and he's been doing so well make guys like Tommy Edmond and Brendan Donovan more expendable, knowing that he's coming up? I don't want to say that just yet, but you know, he barely played a triple A so far, but the idea has to kind of cross Mo's mind when you're thinking about the future of the Cardinals organization and how bad they need help in other places. <clears throat> Pitching. When you've got a gluttony of guys, if you've got an Edmund, a Donovan, a Sejaci, 
and all three of them kind of do similar things, you would think the older, more expensive version of that might have to go. He's certainly a name that we're going to be watching in spring training when uh, camp opens up next year. But uh, I want to dive into some of the comments from our listeners uh, about the Tommy Edmond, Brendan Donovan trade possibilities. We'll do that next here on Locked on Cardinals. Men, are you tired of weakening or thinning hair? Do you want to reach your full hair potential? Leading hair growth supplement Nutrafol helps improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It's clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their hair health wellness quiz. Identify the causes of your thinning hair and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through whole body wellness. They support healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning, such as stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. And it works in a clinical study. 84%, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months of taking Nutrafol Men's Hair Growth Supplement. So take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol will be offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the pro promo code uh, locked on MLB. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, that's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter promo code Locked on MLB. That's Nutrafol.com slash men. Promo code locked on MLB. Cardinals in Milwaukee tonight, wrapping up things uh, as far as game two goes, and then they'll uh, play each other once again tomorrow afternoon. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals again. Uh, apologies for these all coming out so late this week. Uh, my, my other job has me, uh, doing a different shift this week. So, uh, things are a little bit backwards right now for me. So apologies for that, but I do appreciate all of you guys, uh, tuning in and, uh, watching the videos and downloading, uh, each and every episode of the podcast. You guys rock, um, on YouTube, when we post videos, we always get, Dozens and dozens and dozens of comments on uh, each and every video. Some good, some bad, some mean, some nice. Uh, but I want to go through some of the comments since we're talking about uh, the future between Brendan Donovan and Tommy Edmond. Okay. Uh, I put this question out there uh, under one of the videos that we just currently did. Um, it was geared towards what you want the outfield to look like next year. And if you had to trade one, and this is a hypothetical question, I'm not saying you have to trade one of these guys. Don't misconstrue this. But I said, if you have to trade one, gun to your head, you got to trade one. Who would you get rid of? Would you try to trade Tommy Edmond or Brendan Donovan? And we got some, some interesting uh, replies to this one. We'll start with Jack Hagan, who says, trade Edmond in a package for pitching, keep Donovan, Newton center field, bring up Victor Scott II for speed and outfield utility, trade O'Neill and Burleson too. Outfield should be Newt Walker and Palacios and Scott this is assuming Carlson is traded as well. So looking at this, we're trading Tommy Edmond, Tyler O'Neill, Alec Burleson, and Dylan Carlson. And we're putting rookie Victor Scott II, who has never played above double A yet, and a guy who was DFA'd by the Guardians. Those are your starting left fielders. Newton Center, Walker, and Wright. I love your optimism as much as I love what Palacios has done this year. I don't know if him and a rookie uh, are exactly the answer you want in left field. I don't, I don't, I don't know. That makes me a little bit nervous. Would be pretty green out there, but it's not like O'Neill and Carlson are ever healthy to play in left field anyway. So at least these guys hopefully will answer the bell each and every day. Um, the other thing that stands out to me in this scenario is that uh, the remaining outfielders that you got here, uh, Palacios, Newt Bar, Scott, Donovan, and then Walker, four out of five of those guys, left-handed, exclusively left-handed hitters. So I worry a little bit about the splits against left-handed pitching, but I mean, if you're mashing right-handers, like if you're clobbering the right-handers, then I guess it's kind of worth it since only like 25% of the league actually 
has left-handed, like 25% of like the pitchers in the league are left-handed. I mean, you're going to face a lot more righties anyway. So, I mean, I see where you're going with it. I wonder what you could get. If you had, if you ended up, the Cardinals end up trading Edmund Carlson, O'Neill, and Burleson, not in one deal, but in a couple of deals, I wonder what they could get back. Like, I just don't know what their worth is to other teams around the league. I know we think they're worth something, but does everybody else? I, I just, I have no idea. I, I'm just not on the pulse of the league when it comes to what they think about these kind of guys. You know, we'll have, we'll, we'll take, we'll cover that stuff in the off season at some point. Uh, Steve M says Walker has made strides, but he's far from a trustworthy fielder. An outfield of Newt, Edmund, and Donovan is really solid. Walker can DH enough with the revolving door of daily lineup changes. As far as trades, Tyler O'Neill is virtually worthless at this point. Carlson isn't much better. I want them both gone to simplify things, but Mo really likes Carlson. Um, thank you, Steve. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. I'm really worried about that the last um, that the last two seasons have been so bad because of the injuries to Tyler O'Neill and Dylan Carlson for both of them that there is really no market whatsoever. Like nobody wants them. That's what I worry about. And when you think about that. And if you tra if you're trading them just to get rid of them, you're not getting much in return. Is it almost worth holding on to them and using them instead of trading for peanuts? I mean, remember when we thought Carlson was the key piece to getting Juan Soto from Washington? God, it seems like a million years ago, but a couple years ago, that that was the rumor was that Carlson was the holdup, and that's uh, why the trade for Juan Soto didn't go down because the Cardinals didn't want to deal him. It was debunked, uh, apparently, that that was not the case. But still, that was a thing at one point. <laughs> that's that's what we thought of Dylan Carlson, that he was so good that he was the key piece to pull Juan Soto out of Washington, and we didn't pull the trigger. Uh, Brian Prinzavalli, Valley? Prinzavalli? Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, he says, trade O'Neal or demote at least, maybe DH platoon with Gorman for outfield that like Walker and left, Palacios in center, and Newton right. He has the better arm than Walker, correct? Otherwise, flip him with Walker and Edmund full-time at second so he and Wynn can get in a groove. Uh, Donovan, the super utility, can fill in when others need a rest. Same with Gorman and Edmund needs a rest, and the corners are beyond solid. Edmund and Donovan, too valuable to ever trade. Enough of that talk, please. Um, as far as the arm strength goes, let's start there when you're talking about Walker and Nude. Walker, uh, 97th percentile as far as arm and Newt in the 81st percentile. So still solid. Newt's got a really good arm out there, but Walker has elite arm strength in right field. He's got an absolute cannon. So um, just so you know, <laughs> he, uh, he said, he mentioned though, he would flip him if that was the case. If Walker had a stronger arm, Newt would go to left and then uh, Walker would go to right field. I would actually, if you were going to go with those three guys, I would have Newton center, Palacios and left, Walker and right. That would be me. Uh, I don't mind Newton in center field. I think he does a, a pretty good job. Uh, I do like Tommy Edmund as the second baseman as well. Dude won a gold glove there. What's not to like? Uh, but when it, when Wynn needs a day off, slide Tommy over. Donovan or Gorman can play second base. Um, obviously, he's able to fill in in the outfield if you need him to. Uh, listening to the broadcast tonight, uh, Chip and uh, Brad Thompson were sitting there talking about where they see Edmund next year what position and uh and bt goes center field i mean he was pretty darn good i i don't know what the cardinals are going to do about this i i have no idea i'm with you though i don't want them all moving around constantly like i want them to have a position i want them to focus on it so they can be better at that spot that's what i want to happen i understand that you can move people around here and there but i don't want it to be like the way it has been this year where they're just all over the place constantly and a lot of that had to do with injury so it's not exactly what they wanted as far as the cardinals they didn't they didn't come into the season going edmund's going to be a center fielder at some point they they didn't think that it just kind of happened but um the reason that we talk about you when you say like enough of this talk about edmund and donovan getting traded this is why we bring it up because you you don't want to bench one of them, right? And from what you're saying here, if Edmonds at second base, you got Palacios in center or left field, whatever, along with Newton Walker, you're essentially benching Brennan Donovan. Like, where are you playing him? Gorman's going to be your DH, right? So where's Brennan Donovan in this whole scheme of things? I mean, he's too good to be on a bench. Brennan, you can't bench 
a Brandon Donovan. He's got to play. So that's why we discuss this stuff to see if you can flip one of these guys in a package for pitching, which is what you desperately need for next year and moving forward. Again, I'm not saying I want to trade these guys, but some change has got to happen, right? We can't go do the same thing that we did this year and expect different results. That's madness. So uh, if they want to upgrade the pitching, they got to get rid of somebody who's got some worth. And I think Tommy Edmond and Brennan Donovan are guys who have worth. Nolan Gorman has got some worth. You might have to get rid of one of these guys so that you can get uh, a one or a two for your starting rotation next year. Um, it could be a combination, trading outfielders, infielders, or even catchers. Now, you know, with Yvonne Herrera, Coming up, and you got some young guys in the organization that look like pretty good prospects. Does one of those guys get moved, like Kisner or Herrera? I mean, I, I don't know. That's why this offseason is going to be pretty interesting because it's a, a spot where we haven't been in a long time as Cardinals fans. We where they're trying to fix things and desperately trying to because this year was so bad. So um, should be entertaining to say the least. You know, someone's got to go to get the new guys in. It just has to. It's a numbers game. Once again, thank you for uh, all the comments and the questions. Always hit us up on um, YouTube, on the uh, on the podcast there, as well as on Twitter. Always available to you guys. Uh, up next, we got some good news about the uh, injury to Wilson Contreras. We'll talk about it next on on uh, Locked On Cardinals. Modern medical care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics. Natural disasters and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment that you need. If that happens, Jace Medical is your solution. All you got to do to get started is fill out their online form. And one of Jace Medical's board certified physicians will then review it, determine whether or not medications are safe and appropriate for you. Then, if everything's cool to go, Jace will send your prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies where your order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. Now, I don't need to tell you that when you go on a vacation or a trip somewhere, inevitably something happens, right? Where you need medical assistance. When I went on a trip recently, I had the worst toothache ever. And when I got home and I had nothing, I couldn't get any medication for it. This is where Jace Medical can come into play and help you out. You can also send your physician a message for answers to treatment related questions anytime you need to. Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. And that's why Jace Medical offers what they call the Jace case. And you can save more than 360 bucks by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional 20 bucks off by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Cardinals in Milwaukee uh, again tomorrow. They have split the first two games and they will uh, play the third one tomorrow afternoon. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals after this Brewer series wrapped up. Then you got the Reds coming to town for the final weekend at Bush Stadium. Wayne Wright weekend, if you will. Uh, one person who will not be a part of the festivities, unfortunately, is Wilson Contreras. Placed on that 10-day injured list back on Friday due to wrist tendonitis. And although... Not much was really made of the injury. You know, they, they were just kind of like, eh, tinnitus, we're going to shut him down. It made sense, right? If somebody's aching at this point of the season, there's no need to push him. Um, but word came down today that luckily the injury won't require surgery. I, I was unaware that that was even being considered, but a second medical opinion suggested rest and rehabilitation should help heal the injury. That, according to manager Ali Marmel, uh, Contreras, who has not been with the Cardinals on this two city, six game finale road trip traveled to Arizona to meet with a hand specialist who evaluated the condition of his wrist bothered for weeks by left hip right hand and left wrist pain Contreras left the game last Wednesday against the Brewers when a check swing aggravated the wrist injury we all remember that when we were watching the game went on the IL following an MRI exam in St. Louis luckily he was able to catch Adam Wainwright's 200th win and then they were both able to kind of hang things up for the season. He ended up having a good year. 264, 825 OPS, 20 dingers, 67 RBIs in 125 games in his first season, wearing the birds on the bat. He was everything you wanted offensively. Defensively, that's where we're going to have to work on some things for next season. But uh, third straight year with at least 20 home runs. Contreras, 
lived up to the billing. He was exactly what we thought he was going to be. So uh, hopefully next year we get all that nonsense that happened at the beginning of the year uh, behind the play. We were past all that and um, moving on to, to, to greener pastures with Wilson Contreras next season. Again, thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals Hometown Broadcast for the finale with the Brewers uh, coming up on Thursday. And um, that'll be an afternoon game, by the way, tomorrow. So you can catch that with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. And I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals. Unfortunately, I will not be wearing this shirt for the next one because they lost tonight.